So the question is, why do I pray, but God never answers? Have you ever felt like that? That you have a need, you have a worry, you have a struggle, and you're praying, and you're doing what the scripture says to take all your needs and your burdens to God, but then it seems like God's not answering, and you seem like, come on, God, you want me to pray, and you want me to tell you, but at the same time, you're not telling me nothing, God, and you get frustrated, and you get angry. Well, pay attention, because I want to let you know that the answers of God, the prayer requests, are much more available and out there in the open than what we really know. And I want to give you this example. Look what scripture says here in John chapter 14, verse 6 through 9. One of the disciples of Jesus named Philip, he's hearing Jesus say something to him. And then he opens his mouth and God answers Philip. And Philip didn't even know God was there. And that's how mean you could be feeling. We're praying and we're praying and we're praying for an answer. And the answer is literally staring us in the face. The answer is literally right there in our home or in our phone. And we're ignoring it. Pay attention. You're going to find out what I'm speaking about. So Jesus is talking to his disciples and look what he tells them. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Jesus is telling the disciples, if you would see me, you would have seen the Father. And from now on, you have seen the Father. But look what Philip says. Philip's not getting it. And Philip asks something to Jesus. When we ask something to the Lord, that's what? Kind of like a prayer, right? We're asking God something. Philip said to the Lord, Lord, show us the Father. That's his prayer. I want to see the presence of God. I want to feel the presence of God. I, I, I want to see the Lord. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. He said, God, he said, Jesus, if you just show me the Father, that'll be enough for me. That'll, that'll be the only thing I ever need if you just show me the Father. And look what Jesus tells him. And pay attention because there's a lot more in this. Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long and you still do not know me, Philip? What was the question Philip asked? Show us the Father. What did Jesus say? Have I been with you so long, Philip? And you still don't know me. Who was talking to Philip? The Father. God was talking to Philip. Philip was asking Jesus, show us the Father. The Father said, I've been with you all these years. You've been walking with Jesus three years. I've been with you for three years. You've been staring me right in the face. Have I been with you so long, Philip, and you still don't know me? Who was talking? God. God was talking through Jesus, and we're going to learn why he's talking through Jesus. Look what Jesus continues to say. Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? And Jesus goes further. He says, the words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. And Jesus says, believe me. That I am in the Father and the Father is in me or else believe on account of the works themselves. Jesus is telling his disciples, if you've seen me, if you've heard me, you're literally seeing the Father and you're literally, not figuratively, you're literally hearing the Father. Philip prayed, show us the Father. The Father spoke to him through Jesus. Have I been with you so long and you still don't know me? So many times we're praying and God's like, I'm with you. The answer's right there staring you in the face, except you're ignoring the answer. What do I mean by that? I'm talking about the Bible that you can literally go buy at Walmart for like $6. I'm talking about the Bible that you can literally download for free on your phone. The Lord is right there. His words are right there. They're ready for us to see. They're ready for us to hear. The answers to our prayers are right there, and they don't cost more than $5. And in many cases, they're free because you can download the Bible for free. Show us the Father. Philip said, show us the Father. And God said, I've been with you so many years, and you still don't know me. And look what else scripture continues to say here in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6 through 11. Don't get upset now. Don't get upset because, yes, it is this easy. Don't get upset now. No, no, no. I want, no, no. Listen, it is literally this easy. 
The answers to our prayers are literally this available. It's literally this easy. It's right there. It's available. Philip was praying for something that was talking to him and staring him right in the face. He was praying, show us the Father. The Father had been living with him, talking with him, feeding him, teaching him. The Father had been seeing him face to face through Jesus for three years. And Philip was still asking, show us the Father. There's a lot of things that people pray for. In Philip's case, he was walking with Jesus three years. There's a lot of things that people are praying for for years. And the answer is right there. The answer is in the word of God. And look what scripture says here. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6 through 11. Pay attention. Pay attention. This is going to be a blessing to your life. The apostle Paul says this. Yet among the mature, we do impart wisdom. Although it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age. In other words, not an earthly wisdom. Who are doomed to pass away. The wisdom of this world is passing away. But we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God. Which God decreed before the ages of our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this. For if they would, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. The Apostle Paul is saying, there is a wisdom of God that he has prepared. But people aren't able to see it. And then he gives us an, he gives us an example of the people who crucified Jesus. He said, it's so available but if the people would have seen the wisdom that they had known and they had heard, if they would have seen that wisdom and, and paid attention to that wisdom, then they wouldn't have crucified Jesus. But the wisdom was right there, but it was covered from them. They weren't able to understand it because it's not an earthly wisdom. It can't be understood with your earthly carnal mind. You have to be in the spirit. And look what the Apostle Paul continues to say. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. A lot of people say, I pray, but God never speaks to me. Scripture is saying that God has things prepared for people's ears and eyes and hearts. God has things prepared for them to hear, to see, and to feel what other people won't be able to hear, see, and feel. And how does God give them this? For those who love him. You know, when we're going to start to see and hear and understand the truths and the direction of God when we love him. And you might ask yourself, well, in that case, does that mean because I don't hear the answered prayers, does that mean that I don't love God? No, listen, that means that they're there, but you're using your earthly mind. You're trying to understand it through your carnal mind. The same mind that you use for sin, you're trying to use that same understanding, that same mentality, that same logic. You're trying to use it to understand God. You need to humble yourself and you need to ask God, Lord, show me. Teach me, instruct me, and open your Bible or open the Bible on your phone like I'm doing right now. Open the word and seek the Lord. You want the treasure to come to you, but the treasure is not going to just be dropped in your lap. You have the map. You have the tools. You have everything, the flashlights. You have everything, the GPS. You have everything, the directions, the coordinates. You have everything to find the treasure, but you want the treasure to be dropped in your lap. And God's saying, look, the treasure's in my word, but I've given you the GPS. I've given you the map. I've given you the tools. I'm literally showing you where the treasure is, but you need to go and seek the treasure. It's there. Do you really want the treasure? Do you really want that answered prayer? Do you really want the answers to what you're asking God for? Because just like in Philip's case, the answers were staring him in his face. The answer was living with him for three years. And he said, show us the father. And the father spoke through Jesus and said, have I been with you so long, Philip, and you still don't know me? God was saying, Philip, I'm right here. I'm right here, Philip. We're asking God for prayers. We're asking God for answers. And God is saying, the answers are right there. They're right there. Look what the scripture continues to say. These things God has revealed to us, not through the flesh, but look what it says. God has revealed to us through the spirit. For the spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except the spirit of that person which is in him. So also, no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. Now, we have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given to us by God. And we impart this in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. God is saying, these spiritual truths, when you seek them, the Holy Spirit will interpret them. 
But not just the Holy Spirit. I'm going to read another verse, but I'm going to give you a sample of what I'm going to read about in a minute. People are praying for answers, and they don't want to go to church. People are praying for answers, and they don't want to be part of a body of Christ. People want to hear answers, but they don't want to have a pastor preach to them. It's important to be part of a body of Christ. It's important to be part of a church. It's important to go to a church where the Bible is preached. Because the Apostle Paul is saying, the Holy Spirit will teach you, yes. But at the same time, we are interpreting the Word of God, not through the flesh. We are interpreting the Word of God through the Spirit. We are interpreting it to you. Let me give you an example. Many people have read that part where Philip asks, show us the Father. And Jesus says, have I been with you so long and you still don't know me? People read that and they think Jesus is talking about himself. But that's not what Jesus is talking about. That is literally God speaking to Philip through Jesus. Have you ever heard that before? How did you hear that today? Because God is using me to interpret that to you. God is using the wisdom and the knowledge that I have to interpret that to you. Now you know it. Now you understand it. And I'm just here on YouTube sharing something of the Word of God to you. Imagine what's going to happen when you become part of a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church with many more people who love the Lord and have been in the things of God for years and have been through the battles, have been through the tests, have already sought the Lord, have already seen the Lord, have already found the answers, and who are living a life of faith through the struggles, through the battles, and they're running the good race and they're fighting the good fight. Imagine what happens when you become part of a church like that. Imagine when you're going to go through a need, when you're going through a problem, you're going to be asking for an answer, and God's going to use people like that to interpret the Word of God to you and say, Hey, young man. Or, hey, young person, I've been through what you've been through. I've gone through those battles. And look, pay attention to what the Word of God says, and they're going to be able to give you an answer. Not only is the answers to our prayers so available through the Word of God, not only do we have things prepared for ear that has never heard, eye that has never seen, things that a heart has never imagined. For those who love Him, God has these things prepared for you. We need to seek the Lord. He's given us the tools. He's given us the directions. We just need to seek the Lord. But also we need to be around Bible-believing, godly, mature people so that they can also help us to be able to understand the Word of God. And that's what the Apostle Paul is saying. He says this, the natural person, meaning the carnal person, the carnal way of thinking, the natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit or of God, for they are folly to him, and he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual person judges all things, but he himself is judged by no one for who has understood the mind of the lord so as to instruct him but we have the mind of christ you know what scripture is saying there's going to be things in your life that you're going to be able to discern that you're going to be able to make a distinction of you're going to be able to separate good from bad but the enemy's not going to be able to figure you out because who can understand the mind of christ god is saying when you seek me you're going to be able to figure things out and you're going to be able to understand things you're going to see the traps of the enemy. You're going to see the plans of the devil. And you're going to be able to make distinction. You're going to be able to judge those things. You're going to be able to say, oh, no, I see the trap. Oh, no, I see your scheme. But the devil's going to try to figure you out, and he's not going to be able to. Why? Because the devil can't figure out the mind of Christ. And when you fill yourself with this word, you also have the mind of Christ. Every person that has received Jesus Christ as their Savior, God has given you the mind of Christ. And the devil's not going to be able to figure you out. Why? Because you're walking and you're living Loving the Lord, seeking Him, and the devil won't be able to figure you out. So I'm here to tell you, just like Philip, God told him, have I been with you so long and you still don't know me? Just like the Apostle Paul said, God has things prepared for eye and ear and heart that no one can imagine, see, or hear. He has those things prepared for those who love Him. I want to let you know that God has things prepared for you because you love Him. But they are not carnally understood, physically understood. They are spiritually understood. And that is why it is also important to be part of a group, a body of Christ, a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Acts chapter 8, verse 29 through 39. There's a man who's reading scripture, but he doesn't understand it. He loves God. He's coming back from church. He's worshiping the Lord, but he doesn't have that knowledge. He doesn't have that understanding yet. It's simple. It's right there. It's in his face, but he's not there yet. He's not at that level yet. But God uses someone who is at that level to simply interpret it to him, and he gets it. He gets it. 
You know, God has people in your life that he'll use to interpret something that maybe you didn't understand for years and he'll use them just like that to interpret it for you, to tell you what it simply means. But that's why we need to be also a part of a, a body of Christ. Not around immature believers, not around carnal people. That's not what I'm saying. Around people who love the Lord. We need to be around people who have been saved longer than us and who have been fighting the fight and running the race. Look what scripture says here. And the spirit said to Philip, go over and join his chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and asked, do you understand what you are reading? In other words, do you understand the Bible? And look what the man says. And he said, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter. Like a lamb before its shearers is silent. So he opens not his mouth. In his humiliation justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. He was reading an Old Testament scripture speaking about Jesus. And he's reading it after the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus. He doesn't understand what it's talking about. And he asked Philip. And the eunuch said to Philip, about whom, I ask you, does the prophet say this? Is he talking about himself or about someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth and beginning with the scripture. It's important to read the scripture. A lot of the answers to our prayers are literally in the scripture and they're free. It's free. It's a Bible app or it's a Bible that you can buy for $5 at Walmart. The answers to our prayers are literally in the word of God. This man asked a question, who is he talking about, himself or someone else? And the Bible says that Philip, beginning with the scripture, a lot of people don't want to hear that. Well, I don't want to hear what the Bible says. I don't want to hear what scripture says, but the Bible is written by men. So was your medicine. It was created by man. So was your vehicle. It was created by man. So was your house. It was created by man. Except the Bible was written by men who were inspired by the Lord. God spoke to these men and told them what to write down. But people nowadays don't say the Bible says, say the apostle Paul said, say Peter said, said that this man said, don't say scripture says, because when you say scripture says, people are turned off by that and they don't want to hear scripture says, oh, just because the scripture says, I'm going to believe it. Just because the Bible says, I'm going to believe it. That's what we have to do. Just because the scripture says it, I'm going to believe it. Because the scripture is not written by man, earthly man. It's written by men who were inspired by the Lord. And look what the scripture begins, begins to say. Then Philip opened his mouth and beginning with the scripture, he told him the good news about Jesus. And as they were going along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, see here, here's some water. What is preventing me from being baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stop and they both went down into the water, Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized them. And they came up out of the water and the spirit of the Lord carried Philip away and the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing the eunuch. And Philip, when they came out of the water, Scripture says that the Holy Spirit <laughs> vanished Philip, took him somewhere else, and the eunuch was rejoicing. He had just been baptized. But when the eunuch was reading the Bible, when he was reading the Scripture, he didn't understand what it was talking about. But God used a man named Philip to interpret it to him. A lot of the answers to your prayers are right there in Scripture, and God wants to use someone to interpret it to you. That's why it's so important that you read the scripture. It's important that you read the Bible. And it's important that you go to a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church. Because when you hang around people who have been in the things of God, who have been running the race, fighting the fight, God is going to be able to use them the same way he used Philip. God is going to be able to use them to interpret the word of God to you. And you're going to get a lot of the answers to your prayer. You're going to get them. So let me recap. You want to hear God speak to you? He's been in your face so long. Just like God told just like God told Philip through Jesus, I've been with you so long and you still don't know me. God's answers are right there. They're available. The Holy Spirit's living in us. The second thing, he's given us the map. He's given you the GPS. He's given you the tools. Now you need to seek him. The answers to your prayers are in his word. He has things prepared for ears and eyes and hearts that can't imagine, hear or see for those who love him. Seek those answers. They're in his word. And the third thing, it's important to have Christian fellowship with mature people in the Lord who have been saved longer than us, who love the Lord and have been fighting the fight and running the race because the same way God used Philip to interpret the scripture to the eunuch is the same way that God's going to use people like that to interpret the scripture to us. I'm telling you, when you pray, God is waiting and he's ready to answer you. But a lot of times 
we're preventing the answers of God from coming to us because we're being too spiritually lazy or because we just don't see it because we're trying to figure it out through our carnal earthly mind. But I pray and I hope that this video gave you better understanding. And if you're not part of a church, go look for a Bible-believing godly church. And if you live around the Houston area, come visit our church. We have service Wednesdays at 7 p.m. and Sundays at 11.30 a.m. And the address is 1117 Main Street, Pasadena, Texas. 1117 Main Street, Pasadena, Texas. And if you don't live around the Houston area, find a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church. And God is going to give you a lot of the answers to your prayers. He's going to give them to you through the word of God because those men are going to be able to interpret the scripture because they ran the race and they fought the fight. God bless you. I pray this video was a blessing to your life. If it was, do me a favor. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. I post weekly videos that I pray and hope will be a great blessing to your life. So do me that favor and press the subscribe button and turn on those notifications so that you can be alerted every time I post a brand new video. And also, if you want to show your appreciation for this channel or for this video, you can do so in one of two ways. The first way looks something like this. It's a feature at the bottom of your screen or in the little comment box when you try to leave a comment. It's in the corner. It's called Super Thanks. Super Thanks is a feature that YouTube provides for creators so that if a subscriber or a viewer wants to show their appreciation, they can through Super Thanks. Super Thanks are always a great blessing to my life. They're always greatly appreciated. The second way that you can show your appreciation, and this is on a monthly basis, it's $5 a month, about $1.25 a week. The link is in my description. It's called Channel Memberships. Channel memberships is a way that you, the subscriber, or you, the viewer, can show your appreciation on a monthly basis. If that's something you're willing to do, that is also a great blessing to my life. The link is in my description. And in return, you get special badges, special stickers, and access to archive videos that are available for channel members. Again, the link is in my description if that's something you're interested in. And do me a favor, before you click off, make sure you watch one of these videos popping up on the screen. I pray and I hope that they will continue to be a great blessing to your life. God bless you.